uh, not to be much longer. Um, my, my proposal would be to have the three presentations one after another and then have a discussion at the end um, also to, to have a bit more of comparison. We had that discussion yesterday, how specific are the, the, the different countries um, and that we, that we don't do a um, discussion after each session, but here the three presentations of, of 10 minutes. Is that okay with you? And yeah. then keep the time for discussion and comparison afterwards. Good. That's great. Um, so then I will also start recording um, now um, the, the, the whole session so that we will have all the three presentations uh, together. I will push the button. And uh, I think, let me see, can, can you share the screen? Oh, yeah. yeah, that should be possible, right? Uh, can you all share, the, the speakers, can you share your screen? Is it possible? Maybe I ask Federico and Laura to Start Laura sharing is this. going to share, so I ask her if she can do it. Okay, so it I, I will yes. start. Wonderful. I will start recording now, and we will have La, uh, Lausa Federico first, then Sandra, and um, and then afterwards Nuriel and Rachel. So, welcome, and please, uh, Federico Lauda, start your presentation. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Uta, thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we would like to share with you some uh, reflection on uh, a, an ongoing research, a, a, a work in progress, uh, which uh, merges uh, policies, analysis, but also some teaching activities that we are developing, as well as uh, research by, by design. Uh, part of which uh, we will uh, we will share with you, uh, and uh, so we would like also to to, to discuss uh, some of these uh, uh, considerations that we are uh, um, developing. Uh, the the general aim is uh, to outline uh, possible new scenarios on methodologies and intervention perspectives, aimed at uh, innovating the current mass housing redevelopment policies uh, in Italy. Uh, accordingly, we would like to, to very shortly highlight the emerging issues concerning the Italian residential stock. Uh, the main, uh, very shortly, the main faults of our current national policies and uh, propose uh, possible uh, innovative approaches to integrate the intervention on uh, obsolete buildings with uh, economic, uh, fiscal, uh, social and uh, landscape uh, policies. The, the graphs here show a, a, a synthetic picture of our uh, national stock today. Louder, louder, we don't, we still see the first slide. I don't know if you show, want to show other pictures. Uh, um, yes, sorry. Uh, mm. Maybe you go to share um, the desktop um, um, I'm not sure what we, we still see the first slide. Mm, now, it's, now, now we, we see, see. Now we see the second. Okay, uh, so I'm I'm going to leave the 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 presentation, the all uh, screen presentation, and leave the the PDF uh, story. Yeah, that's a very common problem with uh, Zoom for some reason that that it doesn't show the next slides if you go on full screen. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I won't go in full screen, sorry. So as I was saying, this is a, a, a snapshot of our stock, which is characterized by extensive ownership. More than 90% of uh, the homes occupied by residents are owned, so that uh, more than 70% of Italian families live in their own home and only 18% in rented houses. And uh, finally, the age, uh, of the stock, uh, about 64% was built after 1946, which means uh, typological and technological uh, uh, obsolescence to be tackled with. This is also evident by from the timeline, which illustrates the evolution of uh, the Italian residential stock in the last uh, century. 
Uh, as you can see, a trend which considerably increased after the Second World War, particularly due to urbanization phenomena, population growth, and the delayed industrialization process. The main residential policy regulatory framework are indicated uh, with the lines, and uh, they are, uh, highlight uh, uh, three different periods. The first one uh, uh, in black, when uh, middle class expansion was uh, supported and the construction industry was promoted as uh, the driver for urban and economic reconstruction through state contribution and tax reductions for building housing and purchasing homes, so triggering ownership, as well as through funding public housing. Uh, secondly, uh, in the blue line, uh, some uh, laws uh, allowing for the selling of the new public housing stock to become uh, privately owned homes. And finally, our uh, current policy in orange uh, focusing on uh, tax incentives uh, aimed at uh, fostering private initiative towards uh, uh, renovation and then uh, enlarging to include also energy upgrading interventions and finally seismic retrofit. Um, the composition of uh, the uh, residential building curves uh, highlight in green a significant presence of uh, single to two unit housing, which do represent uh, our national middle class mass housing type. However, if we consider uh, the units and not the buildings, almost one third belong to a multifamily typology. Uh, over the years, the already existing imbalances between northern and southern regions have not been overcome, and there are uh, still considerable differences in the territories in terms of uh, income, economic growth, and the dynamics, also harshened by the recent economic crisis, so that we can uh, distinguish in uh, uh, five to, to six uh, different uh, areas, which are distributed all over the country. And uh, uh, of these, excluding metropolitan areas and suburbs, in the other areas, uh, real estate values are sometimes lower than construction costs. And in many peripheral areas, even uh, lower than uh, renovation costs, uh, which means that here national investments in the renovation policies can be considered as uh, useless as they eventually don't stimulate any growth. Uh, the incentive policies, uh, although resulting in a significant impact in terms of uh, the general overall uh, economic uh, uh, GDP and uh, secondary effects also on the building industry, uh, shower funds uh, indiscriminately, uh, they lack concerted strike power and uh, deliver inadequate and patchy results uh, in uh, such a territory as the one described in the previous uh, slides. Uh, uh, in addition, if we analyze uh, uh, the energy upgrading interventions generated, uh, just minor or isolated operations uh, emerge, such as uh, the replacement of the, of the windows, and the very few deep renovation on the overall uh, building, uh, which means that uh, these act on a national scale, but uh, not on a local or on a building scale. In addition, the uh, geographical distribution of these interventions, uh, mainly located uh, in the North and in the high income territories, uh, also introduces uh, the risk that uh, these national investments might uh, uh, broaden the gap uh, in between our areas which are already in decline and uh, areas which are instead of thriving, and also that uh, accordingly public money could be wasted where incentives uh, uh, cannot produce any, any value. As it is also clear from the comparison between the two uh, Northern, Piedmont and the Southern region Campania. Uh, well, uh, within this uh framework of uh, economic and uh, territorial imbalances, uh, we started to develop uh, a critique toward this model of uh, specially generic incentives, which are actually what we have. Uh, also because uh, these have been criticized by European Commission uh, because of their lack of efficiency uh, and we started to, let's say, 
develop uh, a general strategy based on two main pillars that you see here. The first one deals with the differentiation of the fiscal incentives according to the local geographical contexts and to the local values of the assets. So we say uh, it's better to have a differentiated set of incentives which uh, keeps into consideration the local differences. And the second pillar deals with the integration with, with these uh, incentives, which actually are just aimed at, uh, let's say, working on the building itself, integrating these uh, tools with other policies, uh, economic policies, social policies, but also landscape and uh, territorial safety policies. So the intervention on the building remains uh, center stage, we could say, remains the core, but the aim is not only to improve the qualities, improve the performances of the building itself, but let's say have more indirect effects on the surroundings. To be more clear, we have, you know, mm, proposed uh, three examples, mm, three main, let's say, articulations that this uh, general strategy may take. The first one deals with the most dynamic and uh, let's say uh, high pressure real estate markets where we have uh, increasing uh, uh, affordable housing demand. And here the incentives are aimed at uh, increase uh, and foster a social use of the private assets. So. Uh, they provide support to the technological and uh, a typological uh, upgrading of the private dwellings, uh, as long as they will be let at, uh, to low uh, income tenants through uh, rent control uh, systems. Uh, this is a, a, a pilot project that we have developed. The typical case is the large flat in a condo built in the 1950s, uh, where uh, we uh, developed a hypothesis of uh, lightweight and reversible adaptations in order to obtain uh, two smaller flats, which may be rent uh, at uh, uh, affordable um, conditions or also have uh, different functions like uh, daily spaces for uh, children or uh, aged people or um, co-working spaces, which may uh, integrate the monofunctional uh, character of the neighborhoods. The second, let's say main uh, articulation deals with the Italian province. So in the shrinking peripheral areas, incentives may take the shape of supports to the re-inhabiting of underused housing linked to the economic revitalization of those areas. And here the incentives, uh, let's say, may uh, deal with a typological and the technological upgrading of the private dwellings. Uh, in order to start new uh, youth entrepreneurship projects, which imply the permanent residence of the entrepreneur in the building which is upgraded. And also in this case, we have a pilot project dedicated to the um, single family house, which is the, let's say the basic material of uh, our widespread urbanization and industrial districts in which we take advantage of the malleability of this kind of building, which makes possible to promote young businesses through uh, splitting both of the private open space, the garden, both of the building. Uh, but also this strategy may develop in uh, large, uh, uh, residential neighborhoods. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in uh, weak markets, we have a, 
a Genoa case, we have a Taranto case in Southern Italy, also where we have ground floor uh, shops, which may be suitable to be converted into activities spaces. And finally, we have a third, uh, let's say, articulation, which deals with all the situation where re-inhabiting is not appropriate. So here, the main innovation is that the incentives include in the operation to be uh, incentived also the demolition and the re naturalization of the sites. So uh, here the incentives encourage the abandonment of the most critical buildings to reduce the situation that may generate degradation processes and insecurity in the surrounding settlements. And in order to support the removal, the recycle, the on-site recycle of the demolition debris and the re-naturalization of the sites. And Can here, you please, one more minute. We are okay. 15 minutes. We are, yeah, one slide left. Uh, the potential targets include, uh, uh, let's say, uh, declining sites for uh, holidays, such as uh, mountain and coastal settlements, which are now put under pressure because of climate change reasons and uh, sea level rise. Uh, uh, risk, uh, which uh, let's say constitute some priority cases for this uh, intervention line. As a conclusion, to sum up, so uh, we look at middle class mass housing as uh, let's say the core of a strategy which is not just focused on the building, but which uses the building to let's say answer different social, economic, and landscape issues which arise from territories which have different needs, uh, different values embedded in the assets and also different, let's say, expectation in terms of owners. Mm? And the main objectives are to pursue uh, major equity in the allocation of the public investments and also channel these investments towards the reduction of specific forms of social, territorial and environmental inequalities. Uh, we would be very pleased to understand if some in the group is working on these issues. So looking at the building intervention as a, let's say, as a medium to obtain uh, other territorial uh, effects. And uh, the last slide is dedicated to a couple of very recent references. The first one is a, a presentation which we gave in a symposium last year. Uh, online, you will find uh, the presentation and the video recording as well. And the second one is a chapter in a book which is uh, going out in these days, unfortunately, in Italian. But if there is someone uh, interested, we could eventually provide uh, an English abstract. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank, thank you, Laura and uh, Federico. Um, for this uh, presentation, and I uh, would, uh, I think we discuss afterwards. This was uh, 17, 18 minutes, so I hope the others are a bit faster. Please try not to exceed 15 minutes, otherwise we will not have time to to discuss. And I invite um, Sandra and Alisa uh, to their presentation. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think I'm unable to share. Yes, it should be possible. Alisa? It says host uh, disabled participant screen sharing. Um, oops, let me see. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how if I'm a co-host, but I cannot. Um... Oh, you can just make her a co-host and then we can share. A what? Sorry. You should understand. make her co-host. Ah, yeah, let oh, okay. me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I didn't do anything with, uh, where are you, um, or... But if you're a co-host, you should normally be able to make other people co-host. No, I, I can't. I can just... Um... Uh, how, why is, uh, why were, uh, why were I, I'm Frederico and uh, Laura are neither co-hosts, why could you share and uh, um, I don't understand and well, perhaps Alisa not. cannot? 
Perhaps she's not using the client, but uh, using the browser. Is that possible? Um, maybe. Uh, you have a green button, share screen on the, uh, on yes, the bottom. Yes. Yes, please use this one and then you can share or your desktop or, um, um, or a program. I recommend um, to share. I, Don't you well, have this? I have the green uh, share screen button, yes. Yes. Uh, but it shows when I click on it, it shows host uh, disabled participants. Why that? I don't understand. Well, I, could um, share. I just so, tried. I also could share. I could, uh, uh, Ahmed, I, you have an idea why why it's not possible? No, because um, um, can I, you I, just email me your presentation and I, maybe then we um, then I will share it and maybe then we just flip around and yeah. would ask Nuriel um, maybe to present. Can you please try if you can share the screen because I don't understand why you can't share the I screen. I was co-host uh, yesterday and I can't uh, also uh, share my screen yesterday. I don't know why. Yeah, but Frederico and Laura could and they are yeah. in the same condition as know. everybody. <laughs> I tried a minute to go. I tried a minute to go and I was able to do so. Let me try again. Okay, try again. And Alisa, yeah. please email okay. me your presentation. If okay. possible okay. or turn. send. Did you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not our turn. Yes, we can see it. We can see but, your presentation. So, uh, just a, a bit of it. So would you like me to start? It's not our turn, is it? Yes, please. Then I would prepare, propose that uh, Nuriel and Rachel that you start while uh, while we we try to get the presentation of uh, Alisa and and Sandra here. Okay, so yes? just a minute because I begin, not uh, uh, Nuriel. Um, Nuriel will continue, so I'm uh, sh sharing the screen. Okay, everybody. Hi. Um, I would request uh, a six minute or seven minute notification when I pass on to uh, Nouriel. Okay. Because I can't uh, really follow uh, the clock. Um, let me reintroduce myself. I'm a professor at the Technion, missed, your, missed the Haifa meeting because I was abroad. Um, and uh, Nouriel has joined my lab quite recently. So um, I will uh, begin uh, and give the broader view. My uh, research is always a connection between uh, law, property, and uh, planning. It could be uh, housing, and it could be agricultural land. It could be um, any topic uh, that connects uh, the two, and it's all cross-national and uh, so on. I'm also the founding president of the International Academic Association on Planning law and property rights invited to join it's free so um and Noriel will continue he's a phd candidate and he is a, a highly experienced practicing real estate uh, lawyer um and here we go so the topic is fundamental <laughs> apartment buildings as a challenge to urban regeneration with a focus on the type of tenure condom condominium um what are condominiums i think um most people here know uh, en français, appartement en copropriétaire, uh, a similar term or something like that in, in the uh, other Latin languages. In the Pacific uh, terminology, it's called strata. And some types of condominiums are uh, legally close to some of the cooperative housing in uh, Scandinavia, so there are variations. Um, surprise, surprise, there is no data in the world, but my assumption with broad visits to many parts of the world that it is one of the most prevalent forms of housing tenure in the world. Yet there's hardly any literature about it uh, connecting with anything. Here we ask, uh, did it connect with the urban regeneration? And um, a literature review that uh, Nouriel did, as expected, none. Um, if we talk about urban regeneration, it's either uh, public housing, in the literature and in international literature, or it's uh, um, private housing, uh, very uh, out, outdated, and uh, or renters in private bad housing as in the US. So um, condominium housing is all over Europe. I needn't repeat it, and we just saw statistics from Italy. Um, it's it's 
I don't know about, there are no statistics um, that I know of available, but uh, because uh, ownership in many countries is very high, especially Southern Europe and Eastern Europe, but also surprise, surprise, people mentioned before, or yesterday somebody said that in Germany or Austria, the majority are social housing, that's wrong statistically. So uh, this is very prevalent. Um, some are old, some are new. The new ones will have to be regenerated sometime, either because they, uh, the standards change or not structurally. The buildings are, are married to civil engineer, buildings can last for thousands of years, uh, but because of standards or because of need to densify or change land use. Um, legal characteristics of, high, of condominiums related to our topic are that um, it is still private ownership, even though there are shared spaces. That's the difference between a private home on a single lot and uh, condominiums. But if you want to regenerate, especially if it's to demolish and rebuild with better standards, maybe with higher uh, number of units, or you want to add many units in order to finance regeneration, then these usually are uh, it's necessary to receive the uh, approval of everybody. That is the default in all the countries that I've studied, not yet with Nouriel, but in my other research in my lab. And the question is, what do you do when some people do not want to participate? This is not a combination. This would be led by the market through extra, prop, extra development rights that would finance the rebuilding, and so on in places where the real estate market works. So no expiration. What do you do if some people don't want to? You can't tell them, come on, it's good for you. That's what the people like the uh, real estate appraisers say, it's good for you, but it doesn't fit my schedule. It's not good for me necessarily now or ever. So what do you do? And that's a topic of our research, research questions. Uh, where public pro uh, policy does promote regeneration or densification through market process, not through expropriation, what are the legal decision mechanisms that could enable condominium owners to overcome, um, I kind of invented the term, the lock-in effect in this respect, because if you don't change the law, one owner who refuses will stop the cap capability of regeneration. And what are the implications? And there are lots and lots and lots that's uh, not in this research, but uh, they, or, or, or part of it. Uh, and this will be uh, cross-national uh, research in some countries. So there are tremendous, I needn't tell this group about the many social, economic, demographic, and urban of the different modes of overcoming this. Here is uh, Israel, which is in effect a global laboratory. Uh, that is because we are very land scarce and we have a high growth rate of the population. Israelis love children, those of you who were here. I don't think we're looking at that, but if you re-roll your mind, you will see that we have many more children uh, around than in uh, the European countries and we do not have um, uh, no growth uh, cities or uh, declining uh, uh, cities. And on the left is Haifa. You were the technical. This is a different region. <coughs> I took this picture because in one picture, because of the slope, you could see very old condos. These are not public houses. Middle, not an age. And newer ones, these two are 40 years old. These might be 60 years old um, or so. And uh, on your right is Tel Aviv. Uh, this is uh, high value, high five, not high value. Um, on your bottom is uh, high income Tel Aviv. The value of the flats depends mostly on location. Flats are flats are flats. And on your left, Israel, like many uh, of the Soviet countries, and, and uh, many uh, mentioned this, uh, uh, Israel had uh, public housing way back, and it was privatized uh, to its owners. Uh, just like Italy mentioned before, and there's lots of council housing in, uh, like England did with the local housing. This was state owned. They're all privatized. So if you live in one of those and it happens to be uh, near Tel Aviv, uh, then you have high value real estate and you're not 
poor, even though you live or you want to live, you could always sell and get millions and millions of whatever. Um, and so because we are land tight, let me show you, whoops, I wanted to show something else. Okay, um, Israel is now, I don't know if you noticed in your visits, it's going to be a tower country, unless I stop it, but that's a different story. It's about towers. Um, and uh, you can see on your left, uh, this is a, all, all around our condominiums, the low ones. The tower is a condominium and Israel is going up and up and up because if we go um, outside the cities, we're eating up the little open space and agricultural land that's still left. And how does this happen? through a program of dem demolition and rebuilding through market forces on a huge scale. And this is why you scale relative to Israel's uh, population and land area. This is why it's a laboratory globally. I can say that, although I cannot prove it, uh, but I think scale wise, it's huge. Um, so these buildings on the back, they could be rich apartments or pool towers, and they were on a uh, demolished area. The ones in the back, I had a different picture there. I don't know where it is, actually, I do know. Um, they look the same as the other ones. Um, there'll be upper middle income simply because of land values. And the, po the point is that all former owners uh, get a new flat, otherwise they won't agree. It's not forced, they will agree and they will get a new flat in these places if they if usually, or, if they want, they can take the money and buy elsewhere. And the money is not according to the value of the old flat, but the value of the new flat. Uh, this is the same project. This is the same project. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's all been in, and then the high rise towers is, 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 is the same oh, yeah. project. So all this area, as Nouriel points out, all these towers were built on more of these uh, kinds. Sometimes the towers are built right on the plots, sometimes they're built in a broader uh, kind of reshuffling and reparcelation. Uh, but the point is that this is, it, it's hard for, to, it, it's not a question of uh, uh, kicking people out, they're not replaced farther away, um, and it's all totally voluntary. However, how to do that, Israeli legislation was changed from the usual condominium rule where everyone needs to approve, otherwise you can't interfere with private property unless you expropriate, to reduce the number of the majority so that 80% uh, minimum need to approve, and then they can contract, they voluntarily contract with the developers. The state does not intervene with the contracting with private developers. Um, when uh, Nouriel will report about a typical court case, uh, we are analyzing lots of them and uh, uh, this is not broad scale in other countries, but there are a few more countries where there is already a reduced majority. Uh, there is in, in, in British Columbia, there is in New South Wales, but the practice is not yet there. The legislation is finding it necessary that this will probably be reduced once we overcome the endless series of elections that we have. It'll probably be reduced uh, to 67, and I'll pass on to Nouria. Noriel, shall I put this on? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so- Please keep track of time also. You are yes, at 11, 12 minutes. <laughs> I asked to be notified. Okay. Um, Horowitz case. Um, my law firm represented uh, Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Horowitz was- an uh, Let me just say, because these are academics. This, this is an example. It's not part of the research, otherwise you would be in conflict of interest. So this is, the research is in its early phase, and uh, Nouria, I asked him to report on a real live case that he can show what happens to people in some cases. Okay, go on. Okay, so um, as I said, um, my uh, law firm uh, represented Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Horowitz was an el elderly, 85 years old, he lived in a small apartment in Tel Aviv, a two floors building, and uh, three of four homeowners in the building uh, voted in favor of uh, demolished and uh, rebuild the building, uh, um, what we call Pinui Binui, uh, leading by a private developer. So uh, Mr. Horowitz uh, strongly objected to uh, this project. Uh, he said, uh, so I'm, I'm very old, what I need this, 
um, he, he had uh, uh, very strong uh, arguments and he uh, came to our firm and we go to court and in, uh, in the court, uh, Mr. Horvitz claims uh, some, uh, uh, as I said, some uh, strong uh, arguments like um, he said that the plans of the project doesn't fit to uh, disabled people. Uh, uh, in addition, he claims that uh, the project uh, will, uh, will last at least four years and uh, uh, the move uh, to a rented apartment in other area uh, far from his home uh, very, uh, cause him a lot of damages and impair him very much. Um, the court has accepted his claims and obligated the developer and the other owners uh, to change the plans of the project and to offer him a ready to move apartment like immediately so he doesn't have to uh, wait to the new apartment, to the new building. Um, uh, the court ruling of Orvitz is, is just, a, sorry, just an example uh, to uh, a lot of cases in this area. Um, because of these cases, uh, the legislature in Israel uh, changed the, the law, changed the Pinui Binui law in uh, 2018 and states that old people have the right to choose between three options. Uh, all of them at the expense of the, of the developer. Uh, the one option is uh, to move to uh, assisting, uh, assisted living immediately. Uh, the other is uh, moving immediately to a new apartment as close as possible to, to the existing apartment. And the, uh, the, the possible three is uh, receiving some of money that worth to the value of the future apartment. Uh, also right now, so Mr. Horowitz and, and other elderly uh, doesn't have to wait to the new apartment. Rachel, I, uh, Rachel, I back to you. Um, Please, uh, two, mo two more minutes, two more okay. minutes. Uh, I, I finished Nouriel, so here are the example. In most cases nowadays, these become towers uh, because of land values. Um, now, obviously, where there was a lecture, uh, the Italian lecture, and you will see that you ask who, who works in your field, and you will see that we have lots to share. Uh, there are regional differences in Israel. Obviously, if the market value of the land cannot support the demolition and rebuilding, through market value, then this doesn't occur in the peripheral areas. But because of Israel's uh, high demand for more and more, there's uh, people get married and they like to have children. So we have a, a built-in uh, uh, kind of growth machine in that sense. Uh, so uh, more and more peripheral areas come in. Uh, the government also has some kind of programs like this for the periphery, but then, then they're not market rate and uh, uh, they work much more slowly. I want to talk about the many issues that uh, this raises, some legal and some urban issues. Legal issues, uh, if there's a reduced, is a reduced majority analogous to expropriation? This is a legal issue. I mean, how far low, how lower can they go uh, le uh, legislatively before this comes like an expropriation, which is a different, for lawyers, you'll know that this is a, you should know that this is a different rationale uh, expropriation uh, than, uh, uh, but right now it's not expropriation. Um, what does the enforcement against the minority? Who, uh, who does the enforcement? Right now, the uh, people who can take uh, the Mr. Horwitz to court are the neighbors. There were neighbors who want to uh, their rehabilitation. In a new legislation, um, the state uh, wants to, to have the right to intervene as well and to act uh, to take to help the neighbors go to court with the, some of the financing of the court activities. Um, there is also an intermediate uh, conflict resolution uh, stage, which Nouriel didn't mention before we go to court. Are there legitimate and non legitimate reasons? Uh, Nouriel gave an example of where the court thought this was legitimate. There are some reasons that are legit that the court rules yes or not. And Nouriel and I are developing a conceptual framework to try and go beyond the current. I mean, as you know, courts only react to what's 
brought to them, we're trying to get a conceptual uh, uh, framework of what should be legitimate reasons and what should not be, rather than this ad hoc uh, manner that evolves from the bottom. And there's lots of issues of justice and what's where where is the new location and the old location. Right now, the new locations, as I mentioned, are usually on site, but uh, this may not be possible uh, in in the future in the same to the same extent. How Rachel, does it one yes, one minute? We are twenty minutes now. Okay, so I'm stopping here, and here are urban issues for your perusal. And I thank everybody, uh, and uh, you can contact me just with my name. And here is Nouriel's, and uh, we'll be happy to be in touch. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your presentation. And uh, so we still um, can come back to that in the discussion. And in the meantime, I have received the file of um, Alisa and Sandra. So I will invite you. I will share my screen. Um, um, you can try also again. Um, yes. uh, but I, I, will, I will just share my screen and hope it works. Um, we should have the presentation here. Ah, uh, Uta. Apologies, yes. I can't, I don't read the chat at the same time that I talk when I uh, requested it. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I started interrupting you. One. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, can you see the, the presentation in full yes. screen? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you okay. for supporting okay. us. Good morning, everybody. Okay. It's great pleasure for us to be with you this morning. We are Alisa and Sandra from Rig Technical University. And Alisa is going to share some insights from her PhD thesis research where I'm involved as tutor. And the topic is relates to public open space and its transformations in large housing estates. Next, please. Yeah, wait a moment. And uh, I will give very, very short uh, this context. In Riga, like to many similar cities in East Europe, uh, which were developed as industrial centers after Second World War, massive development of large housing estates were developed. In MAC, we could see very different in volumes and different locations. And the biggest uh, are uh, housed by 60,000, not 16, but 60,000 inhabitants. And we have several, these very, very big uh, estates and smaller uh, ones, of course. And of course, now it's uh, under pressure of new development and under risk of uh, loss of interest of residents in these large housing estates, which is important to mention uh, that till now, this is uh, still active part and socially accepted uh, housing for uh, majority of citizens in, uh, in Riga. Thank you, next please. And why we are focused to green open space? Uh, uh, because that open green space is important element in this concept of large housing. And today this space is under several pressures and transformations. And how to understand, how to understand these consequences of quality of this space uh, is one of our aim. Thank you. Next, please. And for better understanding of this topic, some, some points of context are important to know, such as privatization of former housing stock, land reform, uh, which resulted that uh, there are uh, mixed uh, ownership for buildings and land very often and uh, growing pressure from potential investors who are looking for space for new construction in uh, this uh, structure of large housing estates within this structure. And of course, this uh, uh, citizen participation uh, is increasing uh, within this uh, large housing estates as well. Thank you, next please. Uh, yes, 
Yes, and I will continue from now. Uh, here are just some example, uh, examples of literature sources is the next one. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, four research questions were defined. Um, the first one, what are the characteristic features of open public space in housing estates and how these features influence residential environment quality in Riga? Now, what are types of transformation processes um, in large housing estates and how are they influencing the residential environment quality? Also, how do residents of large housing estates in Riga use the public open space and how do they perceive acute, ongoing and possible transformations? And the last one, uh, what are the new open public space management models and how do they influence transformations in large housing estates of Riga? Uh, next one, please. Um, to uh, answer these questions, uh, there are several uh, methods used. Uh, first was collection and analysis of literature sources and archival materials. And then we organized an experiment on transformation of uh, one courtyard in the housing estate of Yugla. Uh, then developed a tool to evaluate residential environment quality, and then conducted site analysis in 13 housing estates. And currently I'm collecting uh, resident survey data on the satisfaction with uh, the public open space uh, in housing estates. And all this together creates a picture of transformation processes and their impact on residential environment quality. Uh, next one, please. Uh, and I will um, talk more in detail about two methods. Uh, next one. Uh, during uh, the Coast Action Urban Allotment Gardens in Europe, uh, we gained experience in urban gardening. And community gardens appeared to be a good tool to support social cohesion, uh, attachment to place, and to make uh, places more livable. Uh, so we have found a courtyard territory um, which is owned by the city uh, and started discussions uh, with um, different city institutions and with local inhabitants, uh, parallelly also growing plants for our garden. Uh, as a result, the process of legal approval appeared to be so long and complicated that we, have forced, um, we, we were forced to have a guerrilla event. Uh, the next one, please. And here you can see one uh, picture representing how our uh, mobile uh, garden beds arrived uh, on the site with cargo bikes. And you can see here uh, that the most interested uh, group of people surprisingly uh, were children and mostly boys in the age of six, uh, 10 years. Um, the next one, please. Uh, so the main findings uh, showed that the process of getting a permit uh, for a community garden or similar transformation is unclear, complicated and long. Locals uh, positively evaluated beautification and introduction of new green areas. Still, people are more interested in beautification and management of the open space which is uh, directly in front of their windows or entrance doors. And uh, as proved also in other countries, but also um, in Yugla estate, that there is a need for a local person or a group of people to watch the site and to manage the site. And next one, please. Uh, so uh, in order to gain objective data on the public open spaces in large housing states, it was decided to analyze existing built environment evaluation tools and based on this uh, develop a new tool. So after the most important um, common domains were identified, the main step, uh, the next step included analysis of the place quality features uh, derived from Matthew Carmona research, uh, also uh, including uh, in this model uh, the common human needs from behavioral analysis and also um, disorder indicators as defined by uh, Michael Passione. So the next one, please. 
Well, um, after analysis um, of those 13 large housing estates, uh, it um, was clear that uh, all of them have um, different kinds um, of transformations. Uh, for example, signs of personalization were identified in all 13 large housing estates, uh, which were mostly self-made uh, flower beds, uh, but also in some cases self-made or self-prepared um, amenities and so on. Public investments in new fully equipped playgrounds for children and sports uh, equipment for older people um, are mainly available in uh, 10 minutes walking distance when we look in the neighborhood uh, location. Then there is also a constant lack of parking places, which in uh, some cases also leads to the transformation of green public open space into a fenced uh, parking lot. And also some neighborhoods show much more intensive infill growth, while others do not have any infill development at all. Uh, this situation can be explained by several aspects, as the tendency to develop new construction in neighborhoods with originally higher, higher real estate prices, uh, but also uh, there is an impact from the land division, uh, which in certain cases make, makes this new construction easier and more available. Uh, the next one, please. So uh, it was decided to use RFG story maps uh, for creation of stories um, and uh, to share uh, the results of the existing current situation and a location of uh, different transformations, um, which uh, makes it available to a wider public and also uh, allows us to make uh, different uh, corrections and um, complete with new data after some time. Uh, the next one, please. And here's one slide about the ongoing uh, residential satisfaction survey. Uh, there are uh, survey questions, but also there is an opportunity for people to write uh, their own, own ideas. And as we can see from these uh, clouds here, that people are dreaming of the quite simple things like uh, new benches and uh, simple maintenance of the courtyard space and new, new children playgrounds. And um, mostly people are unsatisfied with the organization of courtyard areas and with the maintenance, but also with the um, growing um, car parking areas. Um, so um, the next one, I think we already uh, have the limit of our 10 minutes. So we would like to thank you for your attention. Um, and if there are any questions, so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra and uh, Alisa. Yes, you are right. That were really 10 minutes um, of presentation. Thank you so much uh, also um, for, for all the three contributions. And I will continue recording our discussion. Um, so we are a little bit out of time. So there uh, was uh, supposed to, to have a, a 30 minutes discussion and another um, um, 30 minutes. No, we have time until 12.30, right? Is that correct? Um, Ah, we have much more time than what did I calculate anyway. Um, so we have time for discussion. So uh, I think we can still have the 30 um, minutes. And um, uh, I think it was really interesting to see the, the differences between the countries and the, the different pressures and uh, legislations uh, that you have. And I would like to invite everybody to, to comment and to put forward questions with the particular, I mean, interest and, and focus maybe on our um, on the, the theme of our working group, the policies and the, the, I mean, the redefinition, repurposing of policies, and that was very present in, in, in all of your presentations. So please, um, are there any comments um, um, from, uh, from uh, the audience uh, to that? Maybe raise your hand, or that might be that might be good. Or put put a, a question in the chat, and we can come back to that um, afterwards. So please feel free to use um, both of it. 
I saw that Nieves already shared something, uh, the document. Was it, uh, I hadn't time to look into it while sharing the screen and so on, but uh, is it something you want to share with us now, the document also, Nieves? Maybe it's not uh, that immediately relevant with the former presentations, Uta. It was something that uh, was in my mind. I think it was produced by some researchers on the TU Delft. Mm -hmm. And it uh, makes a very consistent revision on current um, housing policies in Europe in general, but more specifically in the Netherlands and, and some other countries about co-housing and uh, novel uh, property rules uh, together with some other environmental and um, health related standards. So I think it's valid. Uh, it's, it's something to have on the state of the art. It's nothing immediately related, as I said, with uh, the former presentations, which I enjoyed. So, so I can you want to share in that in the chat, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I did. I just I, I will I will put it in the chat for everybody just to, to share. This is this is a, a PhD thesis, uh, as far as I can see. Um, this is the typical design of the, the, the PhD thesis um, learning from co houses initiative between passive house engineers and active inhabitants. So I can I can maybe share the link because it took some time to download it. Uh, but I think this is a yeah, it's a PhD thesis that was that was um, made um, in, in Delft. But we will, I can, I can just put forward that into the I can do it for you, later. Uta, don't worry. Yes, I okay, I will put okay the great. Okay. okay, you can put the link, that's a great, great. idea. Thank you, thank you, Nervous, for that. You're so do we have further, uh, further uh, comments, uh, opinions, uh, people, questions maybe to the, Questions to the maybe I have one comment to um, uh, I think maybe interesting for for um, as well for the Italian cases also for what the Israeli uh, example and I experienced also this buildings of towers and I think also the the legislation in Israel to to build these uh, additional floors um, in the in the urban planning uh, statutes. What I wanted to mention from, from Germany is um, that just last year, I think in December, we had a change of law related to the property, um, the condominium uh, properties that to facilitate actually um, an energy efficiency uh, measures, so modernization measures. And it was exactly what Rachel was telling that norm normally these, um, these votes have to be uh, an anonymous um, so that everybody has to agree on modernization. So they changed this law to facilitate um, energetic modernization and also um, barrier-free construction. So to adapt buildings like elevators for elderly so that now this can be done with a simple majority. So that was a big change in the, in the legislation in Germany that just happened uh, December 2020 and uh, to facilitate actually the renovation rate um, of buildings. Maybe something to mention here. Uh, may I comment? Yes, Rafael. Uh, kind of preliminary uh, research um, about uh, different laws. Um, the the decision, decisions that are less than demolition or addition or, of new dwellers these decisions in many countries are starting to receive lower majorities, such as elevators, such as, so that's becoming quite common. The, the big bang is in two situations. One is when uh, additional development rights are granted and the building can be structurally floors added or a slab on the side. And that is happening in, in some countries. Then the question is, because then legally the unit owners uh, have to receive more unit owners. And that's a major uh, intervention with the property rights. So then mm -hmm. that's a challenge. But lower things like what you're saying in Germany, that's a big trend and it's not new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But still it is. It, it makes a big difference for what we experience so far. And of course, I see that the pressure in Israel, in particular in cities like Tel Aviv, is so big, you know, in, in first of all, accommodating um, um, more people. On the other hand, also to see this rise of uh, prices so that that also um, um, probably increases the inequality between, uh, between different sites um, in the country, as it was also described in Italy. 
Of course, it's a much bigger country. So in Israel, as a small country, you have a, a much higher pressure um, on, on the few sites that are there. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, do we have further um, further comments? I think also Laura and uh, Federico, so thank you for your approach, which already somehow also tries to um, in, in involve a design, you know, I mean, how can we react as planners and designers on on this um, on on this fact that we have um, that we have this um, split between um, urban um, agglomerations and the north and the south, um, and we have regions where actually people are still living and um, houses are empty, villages are empty, and and how can we rehabilitate also those um, areas? And uh, I like this approach to also. Uh, be that radical to say maybe we have to demolish even some areas where um, we need a more um, uh, uh, I don't know natural and environmental concerns to be addressed. I also think it's not completely new, but it's always a question if these things are implemented. I think in, in as an academic approach, it is uh, quite often. I don't know how others um, see that or experience that, so maybe we can also reflect on it. Muge, I see you raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd like to first uh, thank to all the presenters. All the resources were extremely interesting. Um, I want to ask a question to uh, Laura and uh, Federico. Um, you, uh, after making a wonderful analysis based on, I mean, national, uh, uh, nation based analysis, uh, you uh, suggested three solutions uh, for the transformation of middle class mass housing, uh, as far as I understand. Uh, what is the difference between the alternative one and two? I couldn't grasp uh, really the difference um, between the first and second solution. Will you? Um, should we wait for other questions, or we can reply right now? I think you can reply. Okay. Uh, so well, um, in 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 general terms, uh, the 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 framework aims at uh, differentiating what is actually a kind of uh, space blind set of incentives in order to have uh, specific incentives for differentiated uh, territorial conditions. Mm? This is the general framework. Um, for the sake of clarity, mm, we, we pointed out three main strategies, which obviously would be declined more specifically according to the different situation, but you say to be to be uh, to be clear, they uh, divide the country into three main, let's say, conditions. Mm? The first one deals with the most dynamic urban markets, mm? where uh, um, rents can be uh, still, uh, let's say, appreciated and extracted. And this is a condition which is actually uh, dealing with a very limited set of cities. You know, uh, maybe we didn't say, uh, we have a declining demography, we have a highly polarized uh, real estate market in which only a limited number of cities actually are growing and uh, actually have uh, dynamic markets. The second strategy deals with the vast middle ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we may, let's say, put under the label of the province, where we have much slower, much weaker markets, medium-sized towns, widespread urbanization, 
where we have uh, decline in demography, where we have uh, uh, decline in values, and uh, then we have a third um, ideal situation, which uh, mm, gathers all the situations where it's not suitable to invest in buildings because of risk conditions, because of uh, um, irrational development, which has uh, uh, unacceptable per capita infrastructural costs. So a set of reasons which define areas where it's uh, reasonable to lighten the load of the uh, uh, urbanization. So the difference is between the first and the second. Well, uh, the uh, incentives in the first one aim at uh, uh, triggering uh, an improvement, both in terms of uh, performances, both in terms of uh, typologies of the existing condominium stock. Uh, but uh, uh, the owners can, uh, let's say, take advantage of these uh, incentives only if the renewed units are offered uh, at uh, uh, affordable rents for a period of 10 years, which is the period which is uh, commonly adopted as the, let's say, the payback, uh, the payback period of the incentives. So the aim is to produce a more efficient stock, but can be also useful in reducing the pressure on the, on the housing markets. And this is, according to our point of view, uh, a public gain uh, aspect which justifies the existence of the incentives for these owners. While the second strategy has a different uh, aim, the aim is to uh, bring back people to, to parts of the country which are actually a bit uh, weak, actually a bit declining, and therefore it uh, proposes to match the building incentives with other kind of incentives aimed at, uh, let's say, uh, um, helping the development of new entrepreneurship sectors, especially youth entrepreneurship sectors related to advanced craft, tourism, agriculture basically these three, these three sectors. And it's not made in abstract. So you, you can benefit of the incentive only if you take care of a building and you put your permanent residence for a certain number of years there. So you, you have, let's say, the, 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 the sum of two lines of uh, funding, one dedicated to the building and one dedicated to the startup of a business, which may constitute some precondition for the repopulation of weak areas. I hope I have been clear putting in light these differences. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Frederico. I think I saw that Rachel had raised her hand earlier. Um, but it's not there anymore. Okay, so no, no comment. Um, if, I don't know anybody else. Otherwise, I would maybe like address to address Alisa. Uh, Sandra had to leave uh, the meeting for a lecture. Um, but uh, maybe to, to, to compare uh, the situation. So um, that what you explained was that there's a lot of, um, I mean, happening by the residents themselves. So what is the, um, maybe I missed the point, but is there any um, official um, strategy towards the, the renovation of these housing estates, which are, which are clearly also different from the ones we saw in Israel and in, and Italy in, in size, for example? And um, um, is, is, is there any public policy already adapted to that and to the green spaces? Or is it still a state of research where you are contributing to, to that? Uh. Well, um, 
Uh, where uh, from 2016, um, uh, we started to, well, uh, the municipality started to uh, introduce um, uh, participatory budgeting tools. Um, but actually, uh, they are not directly focused on the large housing states. They are uh, focusing on the neighborhoods in general. And mm -hmm. um, there are three programs uh, currently. Uh, two of them, um, uh, well, one of them is focusing um, on social cohesion and attachment to place. And then the um, local uh, inhabitants, uh, local, local NGOs can um, uh, come up with their own uh, projects and ideas. Uh, but um, as we did the research on this, they are mainly fo fo focusing on different uh, short-term events like uh, neighborhood um, community festivals or sport events. Uh, then the second one um, started, I think, in 2019, and it aims uh, um, large um, transformations. Uh, also, um, it can be also housing estates, but somehow um, till this point, uh, these were different uh, proposals to have um, new amenities in public parks and so on. And then mm -hmm. the third one uh, is directly focused on large housing estates. Um, and um, mm -hmm. this is um, um, started last year. Um, it was cooperation between the university students and uh, the professional architects. And then we, uh, the municipality um, has chosen uh, free uh, uh, public open spaces in uh, large housing estates, uh, which are municipality owned territories. And uh, together with students, uh, we developed uh, different proposals and then uh, the community uh, wa was able to vote for, for the best solution. Uh, but uh, then they also analyzed uh, the available uh, finance, uh, financing and the approved proposals uh, are now being um, introduced and uh, realized. But as you can see, um, it was um, free, uh, free cases, uh, free projects uh, during one year. So, and uh, if we look in this way, uh, we have these 13 uh, large housing estates, for example, one housing estates having about 50 courtyards Mm -hmm. And in su such, a, uh, such a mode, it would be a very long process uh, and um, there should be, uh, we should look for some other um, strategies and some other maybe financial support and some other tools to make it um, faster and uh, with some more cooperation maybe from also local inhabitants. Mm -hmm. So my answer, there are some tools, but uh, they don't know they don't work that effectively and that fast um, mm -hmm. that the quality improves uh, now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adisa. Um, so is uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I was a bit, uh, um, Matas is raising the hand. Okay, thank you, Matas, please. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say maybe more in a comment um, because uh, Currently, I'm also, uh, working with a master student, and we also are developing something, joining maybe the, the position or the situation in Italy and Israel, and also uh, maybe these uh, bottom-up uh, initiatives in, in Riga, uh, in La Latvia, uh, that uh, uh, because we see some, some kind of uh, split in the policies, uh, because uh, usually, especially in post-socialist countries, we have this, uh, we could say, more top-down policies as, uh, let's say, one, one measure for all the country for renovation, for development, renewal of these large housing estates. But also there is a need, and especially as, a, as in an it Italian case, that usually in these shrinking regions and, and usually rural regions, we need new, new tools, maybe more bottom-up type tools to actually somehow uh, you know, just uh, 
coordinate these, these redevelopment and renewal projects and, and initiatives because it is known that you don't need or there is no need to, let's say, to, to even renew buildings in a peripheral areas, but there is a need at least to beautificate or just to make it a little bit better, these, these, uh, these areas in, in small countries, in small cities to, to actually just, you know, continue their evolution and to see what will be the, what, what awaits them in the future maybe. So uh, we actually, uh, with the students now, we are trying to develop some kind of checklist which could join these top-down measures and bottom-up uh, uh, principles and uh, even let uh, through a discussion, through uh, some kind of uh, uh, really in, uh, initiatives, uh, local, local community initiatives to, to develop really coordinated and uh, uh, coordinated renewal programs for, for these really uh, interesting cases, not, not the cases under real, uh, real estate pressure, but really in the shrinking, uh, uh, shrinking mm -hmm. regions. So may I ask, uh, even, I mean, sometimes we think that in smaller countries like Lithuania, Latvia, and so on, there, there are no shrinking regions. I mean, in the big states, it is very obvious, you know, where we have this, this, this country, like in Italy, in Germany, in, 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 in France, and so on. But uh, apparently, this is also the case in, in the Baltic countries, for example. Yeah, we, we have only one growing city and few suburbs. <laughs> And everything else is shrinking, but there's also differences in shrinking, shrinkage uh, intensity, mm. we could say. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. But I think it's a nice idea to, to, to say to merge these approaches of top down and bottom up. Um, I like this idea. Um, and there was Byron and then Rachel to answer. Yes. I would like to comment on the size of the country. I think that it's also important to see the densities because uh, a country might be small, but the density mm -hmm. might be also low. So mm -hmm. uh, looking at the presentation of Rachel, I was thinking that uh, in Cyprus, we have also a very strict uh, framework on that protects uh, private ownership and uh, also forbid uh, any attempt of uh, a kind of uh, densification or restructuring parts of the city. And, and this leads to a further sprawl and uh, land taking of uh, natural areas at the outskirts of the city instead of uh, uh, doing what is done in Israel, for example. So we have the, the, the human rights and the ownership rights and, and the rights of the different social groups on one hand. But on the other hand, we have the environmental uh, uh, the right for the environment or the, the need for sustainable development of, of the cities and the preservation of the natural or agricultural areas. So uh, I was thinking about the evolution uh, of the pressures in Cyprus, of the housing pressures, if we move uh, onwards uh, the Israeli case. So this is something, uh, it was very useful to see this presentation, especially today for me, because I am thinking of uh, expanding my research in these issues. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Byron. So the density and size of country, uh, I think it's a good point. In, in yeah, in also to to document maybe in our working group. Um, in addition to the, um, uh, if we look at policies, also to to have a better view on the countries and and their particularities. And then Rachel wanted to answer. Oh, I, I, I don't think it was a question. I think that, yes, well, this is a fantastic uh, forum because we have so many shared uh, topics. But I, I wanted to ask um, colleagues, uh, even in, in, well, all of Europe is uh, negative uh, population growth. Uh, Germany took in a lot of uh, immigrants. So I was going to ask before, but I think it's an an a question with no answer. <laughs> but... I, I won't expect an answer. That is, we all know that climate change is going to bring a lot of uh, might push pressures for uh, immigration. Are any countries thinking of that in terms of mass housing? But I don't think I don't think they are. 
Uh, so let me continue uh, with the real question. Um, and the real question is even in countries where uh, there is negative population growth, which is all of Europe and little migration, which is today immigration, which is all of Europe, there are areas in the country where there is populate, uh, growth pressures. It could be in Rome, it could be in Athens, um, it could be in Lisboa, it could have, uh, these are all very negative low birth countries, it could be in Barcelona. And the housing, the condominium housing stock is aging. Uh, are there any thoughts of what to do with it in the kind of intervention that I spoke about, not necessarily towers. By the way, I hate towers and it's a different discussion why, why towers are not good even for density. But um, are there any discussion what to do with this huge housing stock? And uh, can uh, land, can property, for example, in Poland, I did a bit of research in the Warsaw area, the developers uh, can use the higher property rights in order to rebuild. What holds them back is the legislation. They need consensus of everybody. So what I spoke about uh, can be relevant to major cities with real estate pressures and lots of condominiums. So my question is, any thinking about that? Is there any thinking about that? Who, who wants to answer? Are there? So maybe but we, we have a lot of questions that you put forward. So um, will there well, be the new large housing? One. Yeah, for the immigration, yeah, the immigration one, will there be, uh, there was the climate change, of course, the discussion. So here now the question is, how are the existing large housing or estates or condominiums um, uh, are uh, going to be um, adapted to um, or to, to be modified to uh, to respond to the um, to the increasing population in the in the areas which is right, which are also the the bigger cities um, in in all of our countries. Uh, so, is there anybody? The legislation itself that is can yeah. real estate values if a developer wants to be used to either demolish or add extra floors on buildings and if not what is the, what holds that back yeah i think byron wanted to uh, answer or to re I react hi my maybe. neighbor byron hi cyber nice to <laughs> neighbors and we share I the economic that... zone for uh, uh, economic zone in the sea yeah Hopefully. Well, I think that the answer, uh, maybe we need feedback from uh, other domains, especially economic uh, uh, of the construction, because it's an issue of, uh, of how the construction in the industry can provide retrofit of the existing stock in, in, a, um, in a profitable way. I think that today there is no profit in this aspect or they think that there is no profit. That, that's why they are supporting the demolition and the towers. I don't like them either. So uh, I, I don't feel that I'm, I am able to answer, but I think that we have to seek for other uh, uh, colleagues to provide us some ideas maybe. Maybe to answer shortly, I don't have any statistics and numbers. I'm also not from the economy side, but maybe to, to um, uh, to add to, to this remark of that uh, it is not uh, economically or um, 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 interesting for investors to invest in the, in the retrofit. Um, I guess this is something what we see, but um, my personal, that is more a personal opinion, but uh, uh, is that, for example, we have very high um, requirements, and uh, at, at least yes. in, in Germany, when it comes to the retrofit, because they aim for the maximum, they aim to adapt the existing stock to to the new one more or less let's simplify it a bit but which means that it is a very high invest and um, me personally i think uh, we would reach um, much more in renovation and we saw that in the statistic from italy you know where you where you were showing i think the the windows that were exchanged so if we would go for small steps i know the european union aims for the deep renovation what they call the deep renovation um, and um, i think this is a too high 
invest, but we can have a lot of very efficient measures to improve the building stock, uh, at least in, in terms of energy. We had that topic yesterday that energy costs are really an issue for um, for people that can even bring them from the you know the middle class maybe into into a lower social class and and make them not uh, or have them force them to reduce maybe or to change their their habits so i think if we would go for a, a more moderate and more affordable um, a way of um, of managing renovation and uh, um, so by um, Im improving the windows by improving um, the parts that are really relevant like the roofs or the open walls or the foundation and um, the, the the ground levels or by and that is where actually heritage comes in so the heritage authorities are really alarmed by um, this new um, wave of renovation that is put forward by the European Union through the Green Deal 2030, because they say, well, it will it will end up in destroying all what heritage uh, is um, is uh, significant for, and um, so they really um, are pushing forward the idea of um, rather um, improving the building services, which are the heating and cooling systems. Um, because they have a major influ influence to the to the energy um, aspects, so that is an initiative, I, I guess, which is not new because it is part of the the energy um, um, efficiency. I mean, uh, concept uh, to look at both the building and and the services. Um, but still, uh, the policy is rather to go for, for a complete picture and, and that makes it, and there I agree with Byron, um, not very attractive uh, for investors. Uh, the other thing is the densification. I mean, it like building um, extra floors, for example, in, in housing units. It has happened, but on the other hand, then there was a discussion, at least I'm living in Berlin, um, so I can, I mean, that is the experience I have from here, that they stopped it at a certain point because they were afraid of a too high densification due to the due to the parking legislation that comes with it, you know. Um, now we are on the turn to new mobility, yeah. which I think goes along with it, um, that we have to make sure that not everybody who has a flat needs a, needs a parking lot because, um, and, and, and I think so there we, we have to, to redirect also the densification discussion to the public transport and um, the concepts actually of, of modernism in the early 20th century, which was a very much um, infrastructure thought behind you know when when they were planning uh, cities this was still not a real answer to Rachel's uh, question but just a, um, a try to to uh, again uh, display the complexity of the discussion of the the, the topic May um, I, yeah. I commend you really for uh, the question of the energy standards uh, the conf there is a big conflict yes between energy goals and uh, many other goals, including affordable housing and so on. And right now, Europe, Europe, not Germany, as we know, is leading in the directives of the European Union, but it's ho, 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 uh, energy, 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 without looking at the, uh, at, and, and I'm very glad that you mentioned this, um, because um, I, I did a little bit of comparative work on uh, the uh, land and, and building regulations uh, on energy facilities. Um, I mean, the, these standards can be can be so high, and they will change over time. So uh, it, it will be a big challenge to to housing, and yes, maybe more moderation should be there in balancing. Thanks for mentioning this. Thank you, Rachel. Um... I don't know. I was wondering whether um, uh, you, Rachel, and Nuriel, you, did you finish your presentation? I was a bit r rushing you at the end, or is there um, anything to add from that uh, point of uh, um, your presentation? No, I don't think we, we took, it, it was perhaps slated for longer than, uh, than the 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, urban regeneration, I'm convinced that more and more countries uh, will have to uh, think of uh, really replacing uh, old housing. This is happening a lot now in China, even though the buildings are not old. They're from the 80s and the 90s. Uh, it is happening, and, and uh, 
so the, there is a, it's it's happening in some South American countries. It's not happening in Europe, um, but it will have to. I mean, my Warsaw example is when I, I was lecturing to developers, talking to developers uh, association in in Poland, and they said, "Come on, we've got all this socialist housing, which is now private, in the center of Warsaw. Just give us the opportunity, and we'll build high." But it's not mm -hmm. part of the discourse. And I wonder if people look around and think of a uh, of better language. Densification is good. Uh, Europe has the zero land intake, uh, land, you call it land take, not a good term in English, land take uh, policy, not to spread the cities out. So this means building in. Um, for some re reason, this discussion is not occurring anywhere. Uh, from what I can see in mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. platforms that I'm a member of, um, and, and a wee bit uh, here in the in the it, Italian presentation. So th this and and people buildings outlast people by generations. So if we think ahead, um, yeah, cities will regenerate regenerate. Start thinking about it. Maybe it could start in good places, and there have to be legal changes. The law is there, and that's what's halting the center of Warsaw. It's not happening because the legislation does not allow a lower majority. And getting consensus, uh, those of us who studied economics and public policy, this is called the prisoner's dilemma in economics, mm -hmm. right? So it's uh, there is no reason for uh, one owner uh, to, uh, well, why not I negotiate for more? It's, so it's a holdout. And legal intervention needs to be there, whether it's bottom up or top down or regulatory, different questions. But property mm -hmm. is a stumbling block for the flow of cities. So it has to be taken into account. And this is what we raise here, the mm -hmm. legal aspects um, that can promote or inhibit various uh, urban processes in housing. Thank, yeah, thank you, Rachel, for bringing that up again. Um, so that, um, and you are right, there are a lot of countries where it already happens. I mean, for me, it's more an American Americanization of the cities when, when they build in and start building the towers, which indeed also happens in South America and in many, in many countries. Um, Europe is still quite but resistant. The yeah. US does not have condominiums. Yeah. These are all self-owned or rental market housing then what mm -hmm. i now said about the property rights in condominiums as a holdout is a totally different story in the us if a developer yep. buys up a few single family homes or mm -hmm. uh what uh, the, there is no condominium the, oh and i just did some comparative legal analysis with many the uh, the condominiums are only the high end towers started in mm -hmm. miami uh, in mm -hmm. Toronto, but it's not the tradition. So it's a big difference in regeneration of what is the land tenure. Yeah. It, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making the difference. Yeah. I, Pointing. They are they are condominiums and in South America. Yeah. Um, I think Frederico raised his hand for quite a long time, <laughs> and also uh, Nieves. Yes. Uh, yes, I would like to, to contribute to the discussion by uh, answering to the question raised by um, Rachel. Um, saying something about our national situation. And I would say that honestly, I don't think we have a, a situation where the mechanism of uh, demolishing and rebuilding may be truly uh, widespread and feasible. Mm. Uh, as we have shown in one of the first slides shown by Laura, uh, in most of the country, 
um, um, real estate values are below the construction costs. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And mm. this does not mm. create any premise for the, I wouldn't call it regeneration, for the redevelopment process mm. that you have shown in Israel. Uh, more than that, we should, uh, let's say, also think about the fact that these uh, dense parts of the city constitute reserves of uh, embodied energy and we know that, let's say, the, pay, the CO2 payback period uh, also has to be taken into consideration when we speak about substitution. So, um, what I feel is that uh, in a country like ours, where we have low, in general terms, with few exceptions, low real estate values, declining demography and uh, increasing environmental risks because this is another issue which creates differences uh, i feel the need of a uh, of site specific national policies i would call it like this also to solve this uh, let's say strange a juxtaposition between top-down and bottom-up. I would say site-specific national policies uh, sensitive to the different conditions in which the heritage is located mm -hmm. and which would find space for widespread feasibility in, a, uh, in creating the premises for an, an alliance, I would say, between what is middle class now? So uh, an owning society which is aged to retired uh, persons which occupy half of their large 1950s uh, flat, which struggle to meet the maintenance needs, uh, who do not want to move and uh, do not want to stay three years in a parking housing before getting back to the new tower and a series of emerging demands. So new couples, immigrants, uh, new hybrid living and working spaces. So um, I feel that this is the, the more uh, promising field for policies, which take into consideration specific conditions, which pay a lot of attention to the specific condition of the uh, housing heritage, uh, which in a country like ours is highly differentiated. Mm. And uh, well, this. Yeah, thank you. I think that is a, a good point that you made, uh, Federico, there was the specific site specific national policies. And I think I, I gave the give the word to Nieves and afterwards Maren also raised her hand. Okay, thank you. Uta. Um, Following also on uh, yeah, Federico's point, um, I'm not fully aware of the actual um, policies in, in this regard. I think um, Spain has a particular situation in this regard as um, there are many subsidized housing, especially from the 40s and 50s in the um, outskirts of cities. And I think the current, um, there, there is a current um, confusion with uh, the terminology as uh, it refers to regeneration, uh, retrofitting, remodelation, revitalization or renovation, and is uh, contributing to the full confusion and the discoordination among, um, uh, I would say country, I mean, regulations in terms of uh, at the scale of a country and the individual um, regulations that each of the regions or the metropolitan regions are developing. We have cases in which um, some, uh, I mean, full quarters are being um, demolished and rebuilt with a very dramatic loss of uh, identity for higher densities, as um, it was the case of uh, some areas in Alicante, for instance, in the Mediterranean coast. Um, for the um, I think misinterpretation of the actual uh, patterns. 
and some other cases uh, rather in the northern areas and the northern um, cities in which a more um, subtle renovation actions are um, developed. So I think we have cases in which all these um, uh, casuistics are different and, and it really depends on the actual um, uh, yeah, like uh, policies in, in each of the cities, which is not a general rule. And I'm not sure that uh, regarding this shrinking um, tendency, uh, we are in the same uh, basic trend of the, as, as uh, it was mentioned before, because I think in many cities uh, in Spain, there's still a high demand of housing stock, which is not being offered by the current market. Yeah, that was my contribution. I don't know whether it clarifies. Thank you. Thank you, Nieves. I think, Martin, you wanted to say something. You are muted, Martin. You have to unmute. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I read that was the sentence of last year. Your microphone's off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just... some some very general remarks because this is the the working group on policy and i think what we see here is that we have also a, a quite an important intersection of the the housing policy and uh, or housing law and the general planning law um for example um i don't know other countries planning law that well but in germany for example you have these plans that attach a certain right to build something to to a site and if you want to change that it's a very complicated and lengthy process um so um the opportunity to rebuild something in a really different way um becomes very very um complicated and also costly because uh, in that case the um entity who would want to change the these uh, the bounce plan as it's called will have to pay for all that as well um, and a, a similar um, intersection of a law, perhaps, is there with a heritage law. So how do different countries um, manage and organize heritage? And how does that then intersect with, with housing law? And I, I just think it's a, um, these are two kind of possible uh, things that make our task to work on housing policy much more complicated. And we have to kind of, decide on how we're going to deal with that or whether we are going to deal with that at all. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. That is something that I, and, and mm -hmm. if we do, we get again, a whole set of differences about planning laws. For example, in Germany, there's hardly any scope to negotiate um, significant changes in, 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 these, uh, in, in these preconditions that are attached to, to a certain plot. Whilst I think in, in Britain, as far as I know, there's much more scope to negotiate. Uh, and in other countries that again might be different just something to think about i don't have a solution i just want to uh, kind of raise yeah. awareness for that yeah yeah that was what just was just putting in the chat good point martin um i think what 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 i like because we have more or less half an hour to go is to come back and i think that's what you already did martin with your comment um, to um, what are we doing in this working group? How do we approach the policies? I think there were different ideas and, and relevant aspects mentioned in all your presentations. Maybe just to, to, to start that discussion, uh, coming back to the presentation of Laura and Federico, I really like that you had a lot of statistics there, I mean, which, which may, might be available for all the countries, like what are the renovation rates? What is the, the, the ownership? Um, so you have a lot of data. Maybe you can also tell us where you got it from. And if to your knowledge, there is comparable data from other countries. I, I, I would like to ask everybody, all of you, if, if you know about these statistics. So I think it was very good that it was visualized in that way, because we always discuss about the specificity, oh, that was the word uh, Gaia used very nicely yesterday, many times, specificities, which is difficult to pronounce for me. But um, so the specific aspects of each country, and we have to, I think we have to demonstrate that. And not just within the nation, coming back to the site-specific or, I don't know, region-specific or whatever. Um, 
So the, the, the statistics, we have to visualize that. Um, and we, we have also to, to understand how maybe similar phenomena like um, migration, densification and, and shrinking are happening in different ways. Um, and um, yeah, so just some impressions from my side. Uh, who wants to, to comment on that? Uh, uh, maybe Müge. <laughs> Thank you. The um, actually, uh, this is a, this is the core point that we really uh, issue uh, we should uh, we should discuss. I mean, the methodology of um, investigating and showing our country's middle class mass housing policy. As I try to explain uh, in the uh, in the uh, working group three meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, the, uh, after discussing a little bit, we decided to, um, you know, collect data on the bibliography and the legislations, and we uh, thought it might be um, it might be good to uh, show uh, the specific specificities of countries <laughs> of each country uh, through these uh, different uh, historic periods. Uh, the story uh, which the story of uh, each country's middle class mass housing development uh, process through the uh, policies actually this could be descriptive uh, through the uh, you know literature review that we could uh, we could do uh, we could conduct um, or there might be some other uh, ways of uh, showing it uh, through our, uh, you know, uh, graphics that I tried to show, uh, which was developed by uh, Marcel uh, and uh, Uta, basically. Uh, I had a little bit co contribution through the discussions, but the uh, graphics uh, slides uh, belong to Marcel. So um, th this could be, these are the good tries, but as we can see, uh, there might be possibility to show um, the specificities of the countries through uh, statistics as well as Federica and Laura showed. And also, uh, as you can see, the cases could be also very um, good way of uh, exemplifying the current uh, situation, uh, the current policy and outcomes in terms of problems or potentials. Uh, the uh, the middle class mass housing policies in countries. We will see. Uh, I'm sure at the end uh, we will see the similarities because uh, the Russia's case, for example, R Russia's and Nur Nuriel's case, uh, also uh, happening in Turkey. Uh, or uh, there might be some uh, similar situations uh, as uh, Federico and Laura mentioned, uh, again happening in uh, Turkey. But uh, Matas and um, uh, Matas and uh, uh, sorry, I uh, cannot see uh, Alisa and uh, Sandra's, uh, you know, uh, co comments uh, that they mentioned and the case of Alisa's case uh, is rarely happening in Turkey. I mean, this bottom-up uh, issue uh, is very critical issue. But on the other hand, uh, I think I'm, I'm really glad that we started to talk about the um, sustainability issue uh, because one of the one of the uh, key topics that we have to uh, focus is quality of life and quality of life is uh, related to sustainability and uh, also uh, livability uh, uh, fields areas topics so i uh, i think uh, you know uh, now we should focus on the methodology and how we will work on is very critical. We might focus, we might have a, a historical perspective to show our country's, uh, you know, history and uh, its uh, specific conditions, or we might only focus on uh, contemporary time, uh, which is, you know, we, we can 
uh, define some dates uh, to explain the, uh, the, the, our country's contemporary situation problems and uh, the, the conditions. Um, one, the first question is that, and the second question is the different, how we will, how we will really um, exemplify different situations in our countries in terms of, um, in terms of middle class mass housing, regeneration, redevelopment, and renewal. To, because to me, these are the three different uh, conditions uh, in the regeneration uh, policy or intervention, I can see um, some kind of um, redevelop, uh, re um, some kind of declining site or a kind of site which is subject to heritage. Um, but if I mention a redevelopment, this is completely demolishing, as uh, as Rachel mentioned and complete the, uh, uh, creating, constructing a new uh, asset, new building, new condominium, new, uh, you know, even neighborhood, <laughs> things like this. So, uh, and the renewal is something to me is a bit different because uh, without uh, knocking down anything, uh, only individually, people, uh, uh, middle-class families can renew their houses. This is a high potential for, uh, for this class because, you know, uh, low, uh, uh, low uh, income groups uh, do not have such potential, but for uh, middle-class uh, income groups have always such potential to put a little bit budget in their income and to renew their house. So this is a really sustainable, to me, a very sustainable way of uh, renewing uh, a place. A place is very important to me, again, as a person who is uh, working on uh, place-based urban design issues, because in, in the case of Rachel's uh, you know, example, I think the, the, the situation of the old person uh, is very critical. There are many people like this. I mean, in Turkey, we have uh, such kind of renewal projects and they actually redevelopment projects. They call it renewal, but to me, it's completely redevelopment. They knock down the buildings, as you say, uh, six to seven or 75% of people agree to do it. But in many cases, some of the people cannot afford uh, the the new houses, and they have they have to sell it, and they go they have to go somewhere else. But whereas the place based issue, I mean the sense of place, this kind of things are really critical for quality of life. You're demolishing communities. In fact, when you want to uh, redevelop a place or renew a place, so to me. Um, you know, we at the policy, uh, you know, uh, group, uh, we need to uh, think about uh, such kind of, uh, you know, policy examples and uh, we have to focus on such kind of policy problems uh, and we have to um, uh, decide on the scales that we, 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 we will work on uh, policy wise and uh, the, the period of time we, we have to focus, we have to decide now, I mean, not now, but very shortly, and we have to produce. Thank you very much. I had a very long talk. I'm not going to talk anymore, but I just want to open up this discussion. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Muge, and I'm, I'm very thankful to you that you, um, that you put this threefold um, approach of talking about um, uh, region, uh, uh, regeneration, redevelopment, renewal by d distinguishing, I mean, heritage, uh, destruction and improvement um, of existing. And by this also talking about a conservative, a radical approach and a sustainable approach. I think this could be very helpful for us in our thinking um, in looking at the cases, uh, building like a categorization or cluster. So that was uh, very also inspiring for me. And um, but now I, I it was um, I don't know who was first, Rachel or Matas. Um, I, I didn't pay attention. 
Um, I maybe. spoke too much, so matas, please. Matas. <laughs> uh, Rahel was first, I suppose. Uh, I would say that uh, there's one, one maybe questions. If we're talking about policies in Lithuania, we actually have a lot of policies, public policies, which are to some extent completely detached. So not only housing policy, which is really minimum, um, minimal measures. So we have a planning policy, which is just a procedures and uh, building policy, a different thing and land policy because uh, during Soviet uh, times, we actually, all the cities and all the country was a country without land, land ownership. But as a, I like visual thinking, so I, I have one proposal maybe because mm -hmm. there's a lot of differences in all the countries which are participating in this, in this network. Uh, and uh, I suppose we will have to simplify how somehow all the comparison of, of these policies and uh, it still could uh, could uh, uh, let's say we could keep all these specific specificities of, of of our countries but the comparison uh, we will need to somehow simplify the uh, let's say the, the policy questions in, in our countries and I have one diagram uh, mm -hmm. if I could just share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go ahead. Share my screen. There are also some uh, comments uh, of Nieves in the chat. We will save the chat and everything. Yeah, so then yeah. we can uh, go back because, to that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. at first we have all the problems related to terminology, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, yesterday uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, talks about about this these problems, but as as a as a tool to visualizing all these uh, policy and changes in policy, maybe what is more, more interesting and more uh, from a research mm -hmm. perspective, maybe it's more interesting. Uh, I would say that maybe it would be possible actually even in the start uh, to try and uh, think about how, what would be the, the simplified version of comparison for our policies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we can put a lot of policies in one diagram, mm -hmm. uh, we could relate these uh, policies to maybe uh, state regimes. I'm not a specialist in this in this field, so I just Googled and, and put all these <laughs> things. Uh, and also maybe the housing provision uh, models, they are also different, uh, but there are, they can be at the same time different, different models existing. And this later could lead us to some kind of uh, also diagrams which could mm -hmm. help us to mm -hmm. uh, compare because mm -hmm. the changes mm -hmm. is what's actually maybe interests, interests mm -hmm. us all. This could mm -hmm. be something maybe as a, as a method to, to compare all these things. So this is my proposal uh, just because I like visual thinking, that's all. Thank, thank you, Matas. That is great. And, and I think so you are in the right group. Uh, we we all also have already started this visual thinking. Um, so with the templates we had, but here you added some other aspects to it, right? So you described with the, with the welfare, so with the, the political situation and again coming back to the bottom up and, and top down and um, question of who is making, um, who is driving um, uh, the changes. So I think this is very, um, this is very valuable and uh, please share it with us um, so that we can then um, further improve the templates we already have to think about how we will represent these uh, ideas. And there is also uh, some, uh, yeah, also Marcel is commenting on that uh, from the back um, here. And Nieves was also putting something in the, into the chat, which is to me, um, relevant case studies, uh, policies are behind practice. So also to, to use the case studies to, to reflect on what is really happening. And this is what you try to visualize here, right? In as a, as a whole. Thank you for that. And please share the slides with us later. Um, yeah, Rachel. Um, yeah, uh, short comments, I hope this time. <laughs> uh, Matas, you are modest. This is fantastic. Not just visual. <laughs> so thanks very much. Um, the terminology is extremely important. Uh, that was discussed yesterday. Thanks very uh, much. Uh, 
uh, Muge. Uh, it's, uh, some of the terminology in this field is also euphemisms. Euphemismo, that's probably mm -hmm. good, right? Um, that is, regeneration is used in Israel and um, in Hebrew. And mm -hmm. you're not going to say it. And I, I think it's uh, a lot of it is uh, pink washing or whatever color we call it, green washing. Mm -hmm. uh, because regeneration has a social aspect to it. And although in Israel, it's not controversial, it's not perceived as knocking people out, uh, certainly not at this stage. Uh, still, I hate it when the developers call themselves a huge numbers of lawyer firms now. Mm -hmm. They specialize in regeneration. You know, they have to make real estate, real estate lawyers specialize in regeneration. So no, it is, yes, the word of uh, redevelopment or some other word. A uh, tiny comment uh, to in English. Lots of you non-English speaking don't differentiate between to destroy, destruction, and demolition. Mm -hmm, Everything mm -hmm. we discussed here is mm -hmm. demolition. Yeah, yeah. Destruction is through an earthquake or through a bomb. That's destruction. Yeah. Or to get, or, okay. So, um, uh, terminology. Uh, Muge, a, a country, I, I had forgotten that, that in this group we also have Turkey. Turkey is a country where, yes, there are policies and legislation somewhat similar in, to Israel. It started with the earthquake region where they had a special majority. And in, in the big cities, uh, it's occurring in Istanbul, where people say, okay, our building is not so secure, but it is not yet as in Israel. So um, I guess in this range, we do have Turkey a longer range and Israel then somewhere uh, at the extreme. Um, so yes, and, and last uh, support is the statistics that you mentioned. I also found uh, the statistics extremely important. I even took pictures of them, uh, Laura and Fred Frederico. Uh, there are OECD statistics. I think mm -hmm. that all the countries here are OECD members. Uh, it, uh, so mm -hmm. maybe it's not, I'm not sure what, do we have a country here which, which is not, uh, Malta is not is not yet or about to be or just joined the OECD um, and I think all the others here are OECD members so we can resort on their databases uh, on some topics of housing. Last last mm -hmm. point um, about planning law. Don't even touch in any attempt to do comparative planning law um, as a specialist in this area. Uh, it is uh, almost impossible unless you're a specialist in this kind of thing. And it's not really that directly necessary. What is necessary in legal issues is uh, type of housing tenure, which I think most of you know, and the rules about it. Some rules are eviction, uh, the rules of special majority that I uh, discussed. Uh, those who have cooperatives or co they're almost like condominiums need to understand what they mean uh, in terms of law. I know that in this session you call law policy. Policy is broad and within policy there are laws and then they tend to be as hard as structures. <laughs> bad. They can be blockers. And they don't talk about in, in legislation, you cannot really talk about top down and uh, legislation is by parliament. Planning law uh, enables regulation bottom up, but legislative changes take a long time. So these are different mm -hmm. kinds of things in the big field of policy. Some is very soft policy, mm -hmm. some is based mm -hmm. on laws like planning law is a law that enables reg local regulation. It is the middle and it can take ages, yes. But new legislation is a much harder kind of issue. So we have, like buildings, we have different uh, degrees of uh, fortification of law, which could be good and it's often bad. 
Thank, thank you, Rachel, also for, uh, we have a lot of very good summarizing and, and looking at the things from distance. So I think uh, we have a very, very fruitful discussion with the specific inputs and, and suggestions and the reflection on it from a broader perspective again. And um, I really like to invite, um, uh, there also, was also a comment of Luisa here, take into consideration also Mata's proposal to find our terminology. Yeah, again, I, I also stressed that yesterday and I find it extremely, at least for us, we have to define it and, and um, then we can, we can compare against other definitions. So to, to build the glossary. Um, so um, I really would like to, um, invite you of course all everybody is welcome as member of the working group uh, to contribute but we maybe have to define uh, also some roles and and focus in in how to approach the policies and and i would be very glad if uh, in that case we we could integrate matters you with the the visualization part i think you would do a, a great match with marcel who already uh, congratulated you because um, on on that mm -hmm. Um, in, in working on the visualization of that. And I think it was fantastic to see uh, Frederico and Laura that how you started with the statistics and um, that we also um, find a group that works more on the statistics to follow up that approach and to see if we can get all these numbers from OECD um, kind of uh, uh, stuff, uh, um, uh, statistics uh, that are already there. It's it just a point of bringing it and visualize it in the, the same way, because I think that is, again, also the statistics uh, you presented um, from Italy were visualized. Yeah, so and not just numbers. I mean, we are we are architects, most of us, so we need to have the things visualized and make them to make them better uh, comparable. And then um, I also think Alisa and, and Sandra, um, so you were um, rather um, uh, talking about also the, um, um, again, again, the repurposing. So like, how do we address that? It was the last point of Rachel also in your talk. How do we deal um, I and mean, how can we change it? And so to start from the both ends, the bottom up and the top down, and I mean, when it comes, for example, to to these aspects of um, when did we have this discussion on, on greening the cities on facades? Uh, it was in a in a in a conference, and we had Woody Scheuermann, who is the the global leader of facades in Arabs. Um, and uh, I was asking him, say, listen, there is so much knowledge we have, and we know what we should do, but why is it not happening? And and who should we address? Like, uh, who are the players and the stakeholders? And then um, he said, actually, uh, well, I think it's the cities. Because uh, he says, well, you see, and, and that is what you said, Rachel, there are uh, policies or laws that are like structures and they are very hard to change. But then there is there is um, there there are opportunities, and we see that also within the European context in the in the innovation actions and the programs that, for example, um, the European Union puts forward. That we have a lot of initiatives that are related to cities, yeah, because they can maybe make certain policies. So in that sense, I think we should tackle it from both sides. But I'm also some pragmatic, so we should also make uh, suggestions. That, that are somehow feasible and, 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 and that could be uh, presented. So I, I think, uh, so maybe Alisa and, and some others of you, that could be also a very good idea to, um, to look for these initiatives, like also Luisa, I think you said it, to collect these ideas um, on where are things changing and we could do this by case. Study. So I think we have some good input in this session. I'm, I'm very happy to, um, to hear all your contributions. Um, yeah, we will we will send some invitations. Um, so um, the 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 policies groups we will maybe diversify the policy groups a little bit into different themes and in, and activities. And I think then we can manage very well to to move forward with that task. Yeah. Further comments and yeah, Laura. Just a very, very short explanation. We we uh, we tried to uh, manage uh, the statistics uh, based on our uh, census, the National Institute of uh, Statistics. Uh, we uh, uh, drag some information by from uh, that uh, databases database. And uh, we we managed, so we we tried to uh, understand uh, the the phenomenon from a, a historical point of view 
uh, analyzing uh, uh, the data according to the typology of, of the building. And uh, also we, uh, we matched it with the, the uh, collection of uh, uh, laws that we also uh, developed uh, last uh, autumn, uh, also together with, uh, with uh, Louisa. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, some other uh, dat databases which uh, are available uh, uh, in the reports of uh, our Ministry of uh, Finances and uh, also in uh, uh, available uh, in uh, the uh, sites of the energy authorities. Um, the institute, the authority who, who uh, manages uh, uh, the uh, interventions and the collects data in order to understand uh, also whether these uh, tax incentives uh, have been successful or, or not. And also we have uh, uh, our, our sources are also related to the National Association of uh, the Building Industry. Uh, developing researches and analysis in order to understand uh, which are the trends and uh, the future and uh, also how to uh, trigger and how to, uh, to, to push for some uh, national policies as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Laura. I think uh, I would really love to um, to use your example um, of the of the statistics, also of like the the approaches you defined for the design, but in particular for the statistics, maybe as a kind of template, because we are all always desperate, you know, in like where do we find the right statistics? So I think this was very good that you explained where we were looking at. And so we could give this as a guideline also to um, our our members from the different countries. So to to do an effort in in maybe finding these um, um, and using the same, let's say, sources as as far as they are available. But I understood also that you have to had to do a lot of interpretation to adapt the statistics to what you were looking for, right? So you could not take them one to one. Yes, we 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 tried. <clears throat> gather some uh, information and to, to manage uh, all, uh, all the data, uh, uh, grouping some information or uh, uh, yeah. separating in order to, to, to better understand the, the, the phenomenon. The, the data available are really uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but that's always the, the issue, but that's the, our task as scientists to bring it together, to visualize it and to, to simplify it also in, 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 in a correct, but in a good way. Um, and uh, so I think that would be great uh, if, if we can just get, get, an, get an overview for you um, um, and, and have you joining also our, our policy group. We have to reactivate, I think, our working groups. Oh, maybe that's a thing I could just do at the very end before. Um, do we have to go back into a big session to do a summary or is, is that not the idea? No, we can just I think, finish. I don't think, yes just finish. Um, but I would like to share, we, we had this nice, uh, I have to find it, uh, we had this nice um, overview <clears throat> made in our last meetings, um, where we talked about uh, responsibility. So like who is doing what, and I just would like to share that with you again, to remember everybody that we are a working group. <laughs> so, and um, uh, so to join forces, so I will share my screen. Uh, it's just opening. Uh, where is the table? That's right. I have to still working. My Excel sheet is still working. So we did a little overview, like who wants to contribute to what, and maybe we can do a, a short update of that. Um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, would you have, if, if you like, I have uh, mine in, on my screen if you want I can share uh, it. yeah but but now it has opened I just had to open it okay. then okay. let me try <laughs> let me try if it works this one right so maybe some of you remember <clears throat> this table maybe some not but that was what we 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 started to establish also on the I make it bigger which we started also to establish on the website. So actually on the website, uh, 
we have these different, um, uh, this is an old one. So you see, this is the, these were the different tasks we have, like mapping the data, da da dum, comparative analysis, uh, contributing to the platform. But I think we have to reshape it. Um, and here, everybody could say, oh, I would like to contribute. So one and two and three is the policies. Um, I would like to, to contribute. Then we had the group, um, task eight was the poster book, yeah, where we had Ahmed and uh, here in particular, Luisa and, um, and Olga working on that. Um, but I think that we have to rethink this one, two, three um, in the policies. And we don't have to do that now because I think maybe we have to re phrase and rename the, the responsibilities and, and actions that we had here. You see, this was taken from the Memorandum of Understanding. This is what you can find in our Memorandum of Understanding, mapping existing data. But I think we should diversify this mapping and, and analysis um, again, according to the insights we had today on which data to map and how to map. We, we should work also maybe on, on the glossary and um, also on this idea and clustering when we here see repurposing existing planning and public policies. We could maybe work with this, this, this grouping of uh, regeneration, redevelopment and renewal and the, the bottom up and top down approaches. Um, how, how shall we move forward? I think it's... Um, it needs some reflection after this meeting and maybe also some um, some some further um, uh, fine tuning of of the activities within in the policies uh, group. Yeah. Um, so, so let's say we are we have we are not finished, but we we moved very nicely forward with this part here with the. Now it takes very long my computer. With the, with the poster book. So that is something we really did. <clears throat> uh, we still have to work on the workshops while well, joint papers is ongoing. I think some of you were already doing that. Um, publishing, we are doing that. The Atlas is, is something that was discussed yesterday with the template. Yeah. So I make it, a, I make it a light yellow. Um, oh, there is no light yellow. Then I make it a light, um, Mm, well, I make it something like this. So that is ongoing work to do to match. And then we, I think we, we should really now concentrate on, on this part here and, and make a fine tuning of, of the, the task uh, within that with the many input we got to today from your um, presentations. I don't know, uh, Mugo, what do you think? Um, um, yes, I think uh, we should all concentrate on this, uh, especially uh, the uh, this one and uh, I mean the first and second responsibilities are very critical because we have to uh, really decide on what uh, kind of uh, data we will uh, collect according to our countries, uh, and we have to also. Uh, think about mapping obviously after collecting all these data but we we, we need to um, we need to agree on what kind of data we will uh, collect and uh, the our uh, scope uh, mm -hmm. this is these are very important and if we start to discuss and make decision on all these um, uh, these these issues then uh, we can uh, also uh, go further and um, they uh, think about mm. repurposing but uh, on the other hand i'm just uh, thinking and at the same time um <laughs> talking sorry for that uh, but at the same time you know when we uh, is re read our own countries you know middle class mass housing policies we can also uh, note the um, the the, the uh, repurposing policies as well so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe uh, you're right, uh, Uta. Maybe we should just uh, first concentrate on these uh, three responsibilities. Uh, but we need to make a kind of um, a decision. And now we, we need to make a, a, a subsequent meetings, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
and create some core groups uh, in in each uh, responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, it's a bit uh, confusing the order, but this is like how it was written in the memorandum. Um, actually, what we do is the mapping, state of the art and the comparative analysis. Yeah, and I think here um, I, I would really be happy if uh, so matters with your proposal. Um, I mean, Marcel, I guess, uh, can be involved, but we need some more. Um, um, I, I, we will see who will be who will be willing and able to contribute to to visualize this. I mean, the comparative analysis is the also the visualization. The mapping is to get the data, yeah, and and then describe the state of the art. And I think Muge, you are right. We if we describe the state of the art, we always have cases in mind and and ongoing policies. So we we probably could. Um, somehow do that in uh, in parallel but maybe focus first on the the here the, the 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 dark green ones and then focus later on the repurposing after we have analyzed the data somehow um yeah so i would like to invite you and and um um to i will send around the link of this table which is on our website we all have to remember again that we have a website where everything is is uh, stored um so i will um also this list is not updated so we we have i think uh, more members in here now um and invite you to to take part in this group so i think we should follow up with another work group meeting um in the near future maybe in april um to discuss further how we divide the work we cannot do that now um we talked two and a half hours now so that we need a break um but I think if you agree, um, we would will invite for a, a follow up meeting. I will stop share this now. Um, and you can think about where where you would like to contribute, and and then we can do subgroup meetings um, where we collect the data. Yeah, if you agree. Yeah. Okay. Everybody wants to have lunch. Yes. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Muge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marcel had to leave. Okay. Yes, okay. So I think um it's very good. Um we will we will try to summarize all this in an email and come up with some proposals for the working groups and take your presentations that we that we saw today and your contributions as examples. I think this was really helpful and uh, and then continue working with these examples yeah uh, matters if you could you also that. share your maybe your uh, if you like uh, this this presentation or otherwise we can do that in the in the coming meetings uh, where we talk about it i can send it to you maybe and uh, yeah we will redistribute later Yes, so then I can share it with everybody in the working group as a also as an example. And the same maybe for Laura and uh, if I could get all the presentations, would that be Alisa's? I have already. Um, if you would send me a PDF, that would be uh, Grace. Uh, great. What are you doing? With join. Them? Uh, yeah. Uh, Uta, are you posting them? Because if you're posting, it's a different question of copyright. Uh, yeah, I thought I, I, I would like to distribute it to the working group. Uh, so when we invite for the next working group meeting, so if there is any copyright issue, then maybe you take off, you take out those, I don't know, slides or photos that you cannot share. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any, any further comments? Otherwise, let's have a lunch break. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank it was you a very, very good much meeting. for your coordination. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. All. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. I will stop recording. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>